Here we're going to touch on the types of proteins. As a general quick short summary, there are many different types of proteins. Keep in mind that the types of proteins can be defined by their shape because that will help determine potentially their function. So just general types of proteins. Well, they all have different functions but share the same building blocks. And those building blocks are amino acids. Some examples or classifications of proteins can be uh, used as en enzymes. They can be used for transport. Some proteins are structural, such as collagen or keratin. Some are used for defense. Some are contractile. So looking again at our specific types of proteins, well, the ribosomes are important for protein assembly. Uh, they can be they can be free floating in the cytosol. They can also be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Rubisco is a type of protein that's involved in the photosynthetic process. Pepsin is an enzyme found in your stomach to help break down food. Actin filaments are structural components of your hair, giving it its strength despite its very small diameter. And insulin is important for regulation of your blood glucose levels. All specific types in relation to proteins. So I think there's two main classifications when we're looking at protein structure. There's the structural ones, which are long cables that provide uh, shape and strength. So for example, as I just gave, your hair has these uh, long kind of cable-like structures. And then there's your globular hair. These are grooves and depressions. These are kind of form this more three-dimensional globe-like shape. And these are typically enzymes and also hemoglobin has this type of classification. Uh, protein functions, there's three uh, examples of protein functions. Uh, here we have transport. So some proteins transport various substances, such as oxygen, ions, and so on. This example provided here is hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is a very specific shape that it takes on. These are the heme units, the um, iron units, and this is important in your red blood cells for carrying oxygen. Now, as its structure relates to function, so shape has a direct impact on function. Normal red blood cells have this nice cross-section. We call this biconcave disc. They look like this. Uh, and then we have this abnormal condition called sickle cell. They have this weird sickle kind of half moon shape to them. And that greatly impacts the function of red blood cells. So here we have a normal red blood cell. And then here we have a sickle shaped one. The normal red blood cells are smooth. They're round. Again, they're called a biconcave disc. They move very easily through our capillaries and through our vessels, arteries, and veins in our circulatory system. And they keep transport oxygen very efficiently. Sickle cell shapes, is if you have sickle cell anemia, don't move easily through the blood. They're stiff and sticky. They tend to form these clumps and get stuck in blood vessels, which is not a good thing. This can block uh, blood flow, blood, uh, blood vessels, to uh, limbs, to organs, and this can cause serious infection or organ damage. So this is not a good uh, condition to have. Also, you could just look at the shape, not as efficient at carrying oxygen. Another function uh, of proteins can be information transfer. So give the example here of certain uh, protein hormones or peptide hormones. Uh, insulin is an example because it helps control the amount of sugar in the blood. Your body needs to maintain homeostasis. It needs to maintain a very controlled amount of blood glucose levels. Insulin will help keep that in check. Also important uh, for defense in the form of antibodies. It marks foreign bodies for elimination. Here we have our antigens, our antibodies. These are very important shape. We could see here, these all distinctive shape. And this again relates to uh, uh, proteins here. Lastly, our protein functions, they can form a catalyst. So almost all of the chemical reactions that are in a living cell are catalyzed by enzymes. In general, what an enzyme does is it reduces the amount of energy needed to reach an end product. So here, to combine A with B without the enzyme would take this much energy before it produced the complex AB. With enzymes here, taking a lot less energy to produce the end re same end result. In this example, we'll notice that the time it takes to produce with or without the enzyme is the same. However, what is reduced is the amount of energy. Without enzymes, we would not be able to survive.